Good morning. Good morning. Are you Helga? Nice. Hello. Nice to meet I'm you. Chris. You look very smart. Thank you. Helga Weissover was the daughter of a prosperous banker until her family and all of Prague's Jews were forced to give up their homes and wealth and herded onto trains to live in a ghetto. Helga, what do you remember of this journey 77 years ago? I remember everything. There are things I cannot forget. But I remember how we traveled at the time, but it was not such a nice day. It was cold, snow. It was December 1941. Yeah. I was 12. They were assess men and they were screaming on us and they gave us orders how to do and all the time hurry, hurry along. Helga and I are taking the same journey she and her family took in 1941 to a garrison town called Terezin. When you started your journey, what did you think it would be like at the other end? We were perhaps a little naive. They told us we will be somewhere concentrated in a ghetto. We didn't expect the war would be so long. Yeah. And so we supposed somehow we would survive it. What were you allowed to take with you to bring? It was very few things. We were allowed to take 50 kilo luggage. 50 kilo luggage is not too much. Mm. I was very fond of drawing since my childhood. So I put inside my luggage a box of watercolors, some crayons and some paper. We're arriving at the station where Helga disembarked. It's nearly two miles from the Terezin camp. Yeah, be very careful. I'm carrying your handbag. OK? And this is the same... Is that the same station building? As I, when think, you came? I think so. From here, we had to walk to Terezia. How far was that? Three kilometres. Three kilometres? And was it cold? It was cold and it was snow. So there was snow everywhere. You'd have been freezing. It was in December. Yeah. It's a long way. Yes. The prisoners were forbidden to keep records of their time in Terezin. But this didn't stop Helga from using the pens and papers she packed to keep a diary, which she illustrated with drawings like this one of the prisoners walking to the camp. A bumpy road and a thaw. Our heavy feet sink into the mud and dirty yellow water squirts out from beneath the carriages laden with luggage. We learn lots of unpleasant things. The worst is that men and women live separately. Everybody who was able to walk had to walk. Yeah. Some old or ill were carried. So this is coming up to terrace, isn't it? Mm. So we are inside. Mm. Terrazin suited the Nazis' purpose. As a former garrison town, it was separate from other settlements, with a clear perimeter to prevent the inhabitants escaping. Before the war, 7,000 people lived here, but the Nazis threw them out, so more than eight times that number of Jews could be crammed into the same space. Always the memories come back. I recognize the buildings. Is this the original door? Yes, this was the entrance we came inside. But only women. Women and men were separated. My father was sent somewhere else, but we didn't yet know where. So you and your mother must have been very worried about your father, we, what was happening? You no, know, we were, sure we were. <laughs> we weren't allowed to go outside. Helga's painting of the corridor inside the barracks gives a flavour of how grim life was. The little girl in the makeshift bed has tuberculosis. Which one do you think was your window, your dormitory? Somewhere here. Locked in the building, Helga sketched the view of the courtyard. But one day, this would be the scene of unspeakable cruelty, 
when the SS caught nine boys who tried to send letters to their mothers. I remember this moment. It was terrible because we were not allowed to go out, but we watched it. It was one of the worst moments. My hand is trembling so much from just thinking about it. We saw a small group in the front and the rear were the SS. In the middle, nine young men with shovels on their shoulders so they could dig their own graves. Nine condemned to death. What did these boys do that was so terrible to be dealt with so cruelly? And they were hanged here. They only wanted to let their parents know they are alive. 